Hey everyone, this is Ross, and in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the technique of air layering. And this is probably my favorite technique for propagating figs. That's what air layering is. It's a form of propagation. And I'm gonna be showing you guys two different ways of how to do this, because there's many ways of, of doing it. I think the two I'm gonna show you guys are very, very simple, um, really easy to do. In fact, air layering in general is just very easy to do. Um, and that's why I like it so much. It's really almost a guaranteed method of propagating. And you can do this on other fruit trees too, not just figs. You can do this on stone fruits. A lot of people do this on, on tropical trees. You know, they just may take a bit longer. The fig is very readily rooted. So it's very easy to do this on, on figs. And I've done this of many different, many different years and many different methods. Um, and I think this is the best way. So this is the, the sandwich bag method that actually Ben B had turned me on to years ago. And essentially, you fill up a sandwich bag with soil that's pre-moistened. Also, we need to have the right soil. We need to have a soil that holds lots of water because we don't want this to dry out. We wanna have smaller particles, denser particles, um, or not denser particles, really just a big surface area because when we wrap this over top of our branch, we want to make sure that the roots uh, or the, the, the contact from the soil to the branch is really good. And that's so important when it comes to air layering. So if you don't have the right soil, make sure you get something that has smaller pieces in it, smaller, par excuse me, so smaller particles. That's really key here. So uh, what we're going to do now is we're just going to dive right into this. I think it's also really important though to mention that this is a time sensitive thing. You don't wanna be doing this when it's cold outside, when these trees are dormant. Uh, I think ideally the temperatures outside should be somewhere in the 80s. Uh, the root zones of these plants needs to be above 70. Uh, if they're not above 70, you're not gonna get the root growth that you're looking for. So it's really important to have the right metabolism set up for these trees. So. What we're gonna first do is we're gonna put this, this bag down and we're gonna come in here and we're actually going to score the bark. Um, we're gonna girdle the bark, excuse me. And essentially girdling is just coming into the trunk all the way around. We're gonna make one ring here. And then we're gonna make a second ring a bit further down. And we're just essentially removing the bark, we're removing the cambium, and then we're exposing that hardwood. If you leave the cambium, there's a good chance that you're not gonna get roots. So you need to make sure that you see this hardwood. This is the white or yellow stuff underneath the green, which is the cambium. The green is the cambium. So we're doing this all the way around. It's not gonna harm the tree. You don't wanna do this on too many branches. You don't wanna do this too many times. You could impact the fruit quality, for example. Um, you could also kill the tree if you girdle too many branches or if your girdle is too significant. It's just not gonna happen on the figs, guys. Just make sure you're not going too deep here into the hardwood. And then we're gonna take our, our sandwich bag here that's filled with soil that's pre-moistened small particles, and we're gonna make a slit in the sandwich bag here with our knife. You can also use scissors, it's up to you guys. And then we're gonna wrap this around where we had just placed, I'm gonna take this leaf off so you guys get a better view. And we're gonna wrap this around where we just were essentially. And I think I need to make this bag even larger here or the slit even larger. And then we're just essentially gonna tighten this up real nice. Make sure we have good contact. We need to have good moisture contacts on this tree. And then we're going to wrap it. And I have just any old material here that's gonna be durable. This is called tree tube. You guys can use any material you want that's gonna last. This is just a, a rubber, actually this is more of a plastic tube. 
that's good for wrapping trees because it's it's also stretchy and then we're going to come in here we're going to do another double knot or a double tie all the way around what we don't want is for this thing to move if we form roots and this is on here real good this is not going to swell actually it is swaying just a bit so what i'm going to do is when this video is over, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna wrap this even further. Because if roots form in here, right where, they're gonna form, by the way, right where we made that cut. So if this thing's moving around and stuff, it's gonna break those really fragile roots. So we wanna make sure this is not going anywhere. Then the last step is to come in here with tin foil, excuse me, aluminum foil, whatever you guys like to call this stuff. And we're gonna wrap it all the way around. And this is essentially very simply going to keep the moisture from evaporating outside of the soil. We wanna keep the moisture in the soil. We don't wanna to have to add any more soil, any more moisture to the soil. We wanna have this a consistent moisture level so that this can form the roots necessary. If you don't have consistent moisture, that's why we need the fine particles. Um, that's why we need a wet soil to begin with. If you don't have that, if this dries out, you're not going to have a successful air layer. So putting around the tin foil is really, really important. And then about two months from now, you know, depending on the time of the year, this may only take a month. This could take a month and a half, depending on the species of fruit tree, this could take even longer. But what's nice about this is that this is clear, right? The sandwich bag is clear. So I can take off this tin foil see if see the root development and then make a judgment call okay does this have enough roots to then support all these leaves the answer is probably no so what we need to do once we take this off because you're going to make a cut right here once there's enough roots to support all this growth is that we're probably going to have to take off a number of these leaves and my objective here you can see there's a lot of fruits on this this is my black madeira kk that i planted in the ground this year um, all these fruits, I want them to ripen before I take this off because I don't want, I want to eat all these fruits first off. Um, but also I'm probably going to wait until this tree is dormant. I've kind of timed it pretty well so that we're doing this now in early August. That gives us about, you know, today's August 9th. That'll give us roughly about, you know, give or take about two and a half months, somewhere around there for this to be on here to fully root itself out. For these fruits to also ripen so that two and a half months later from now when we get our first frost on average i can come in here cut this off this can also go dormant naturally all the leaves will probably fall off by that time anyway and then that way i'm not really stressing this whole thing out it's almost as if i had just pruned the tree you know what i mean that was my main thought process in this whole thing get the fruits to ripen and then cut it off at a time where it's going to be like you're just cutting off a limb anyway because cutting off a big limb when these trees are actively growing could be a big shock to the tree so it's really important to keep that in, into consideration now the second method here i want to mention to you guys is actually down on the lower level here i'm going to move the camera just down slightly so you guys can see this and you can see what we've done is we've set up these cinder blocks, those red cinder blocks right there on each side of the tree. And then we've wrapped a pot around, around the trunk. And what you do is the same exact thing. We take off the bark, we expose the hardwood. We also take off that cambium. And then we're going to wrap this pot around it we can seal it up because what I've done here on the other side, if I can turn this around for you guys, we made a slit in the pot. This kind of whole thing just fell apart on me, but we made a slit in the pot. We're going to tape this back up together so that it's one pot again. And then we're going to fill this whole thing in with soil. And once we fill this whole thing in soil, it's going to be the same thing as this, except we don't have tin foil. We don't need tin foil. We don't probably need to water this at all either because there's so much soil in there. It's going to stay pretty wet. Um, and this is going to be a longer process because this is really thick, older wood. 
This is gonna take a longer time than getting this two-year-old wood up here that I was air layering. One-year-old wood is probably best. This is probably four or five years old, this wood. So to get this to air layer is gonna take some time. This is probably something you wanna do in the beginning of your season. Um, give it probably like three or four months and hopefully in about two and a half months from now, this will be ready just like these other ones and I can chop this off because what's gonna end up happening to this tree anyway is that this is gonna get killed in the winter time. So rather than waste this really thick growth here, I can make myself many copies that inevitably is gonna die anyway. So I wanna thank everybody here for watching this video. It's really, really simple. It's really as easy as that. I definitely recommend the sandwich bags and uh, I hope you guys have success with this method, all right? So if you're interested, by the way, you, there's other videos I've done on this technique showing you guys the results. We've done this in prior years. Check out those videos. And if there's somebody you know who's interested in growing figs or interested in this technique, wants to learn how to do this, just share the video with them. I'd really appreciate it. Also, I wanna thank everybody again, once again for watching. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter and we'll catch you all soon. Take care, everybody. We'll see you for tomorrow's video.